speed bunny boat like a bird on the wing <laughs> over the sea to Felix Stowe <laughs> <Tiddly> Bush <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Wow. Well, just over there, the kids of Colnese Junior School are waiting to give me a terrific welcome. Well, I deserve it, having rode all the way from Edinburgh last week. Yeah. yeah. Shouting underneath the flare Just a minute, I'll tell a lie, no it was ten But still I hear the showman shouting again and again and again Oh! show here we are at Felixstowe and you are the girls and boys of what school? Colin! And we hello what's Keith Harris doing over there? Actually I'll tell you what we're doing Rolf Orville and I have our very own singing choir haven't we? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Right. Nice and loud. Climb up on my knee. What's my name? Little Orville. <laughs> Though you're only three. I'm four. Four. Yeah. Four. Little Orv. Ooh. There's no way of knowing. Ooh. And there's no way of showing. Ah. All together. What you mean to me. Little Orv. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on to that. You got that, Samantha? That's a go. Do you remember last week I was telling you how to make some bowls out of carving big pieces off the side of trees, cutting them off with a saw, and then flattening the bottom? And this one, I started to chisel it out now. I've done a bit more chiseling. You can see I haven't finished that inside piece yet. But do you remember I was using a drill to sand the top of it? And I've drilled most of that with a big, round, hard, coarse grinding piece like that, a big, flat one. Now, if I use a smoother one there, you can perhaps see the little marks. Can you see them there, just on that edge, the marks of the rough drill? Now, if I use a smoother one, we can take them off. You, you've got to make sure you're allowed to do this and get that cable out the road. If you're not allowed to do it, get your dad to do it, but... You can just sand that down 
until you've removed all those lines of that rough, the rough uh, grinder beforehand. Now, what I use to finish this off is some wet and dry emery cloth, and the reason I use this is when it gets clogged up with sawdust, you can just put it under a tap and scrub it with a brush and it all comes out and it's like new again. And you, you scrub that until all those marks go. I use for the very final finish, I use 400 grit. That's the finest of all. And you can use just tiny little bits like this with a, a cork sanding block. You put them across there and you sand away like that. <coughs> until you've got rid of all those marks. And when you want it to get really smooth, you spit like that and then you you go away like that and that that spit that moisture brings up the grain and you then sand off the grain until it gets really smooth just feel that bit feel that just feel that it's isn't that good it's as smooth as a baby's bot isn't it lovely <laughs> <laughs> oh dear pass us that thing samantha when i was a kid sharon you're samantha sorry love. When I was a kid, I was terrible at woodwork. I couldn't do anything straight. Took eight weeks to make a blooming thing and it fell over at the end, <laughs> like that. But I found out when I've grown up that you don't have to do straight things. You can do curvy things like this. I've made a chopping block out of that old piece of elm from last week. Now what happens is you chop up the onions on there, you put your plate under there, and you push the little bits down there and it falls through the hole. Is that a good idea? Hey? Pass us the oil, Robin. Now if you want to oil up something that you're going to use for food, Use some sunflower oil or something, not linseed, otherwise it smells a bit. Now, look at that gorgeous oil on there, eh? Way that brings the grain out. Oh, look at that colour. Isn't that stunning? Now, if you oil that all up, I mean, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? And if you wanted to see how, for example, this one underneath, how that came up, that's a piece that's been carved off an old thorn tree. You can see the rough marks at the back. See where the saw was? And I've smoothed it all off at the front, and I'll just wet it with ordinary water. Have a look at that gorgeous grain. It's like gold, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, what would you think that's worth, a bit like that? I don't know what it's worth in money. It's just a joy to actually do it yourself. But I tell you what's worth a big cheer. Dollar!
you, Dollar. Thank you. What a knockout. Super. Thanks. Take it. Take a seat, kids. Have a rest. I thought we'd change the pace to a nice sort of Sunday afternoon type song now. All right. <laughs> Sunday afternoon With one you love The sun above Waiting for the moon The old accordion plane A sentimental tune Cruising down the river On the Sunday Squeaker for coming on that trip with me in the little putt putt boat. And after the filming, I fell in the water and the blessed sweater shrunk. Look at that. <laughs> Have you ever heard the old song called Felix Kept on Walking? Have you heard that? Oh. Well, we've got a fella in Felix though today who keeps on talking. Keith Harris! <laughs> Thank you very much, Keith. Yeah, what are we going to do, son? What are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah, well, don't sniff, because you always sniff. I thought it. All right, Ellen, tap again. Go on. Yeah, <laughs> what I am going to do, I am going to demonstrate the art of ventriloquism. Not the art of ventriloquism. That's what I said. The art of ventriloquism. <laughs> Fancy to the art of ventriloquism. <laughs> I am going to try and say, without moving my lips, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Did he really? No, that's what I'm going to say. Well, I see one out there in your mouth. Yes. Impossible. Impossible? You can't do it. Do you want to bet? Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have a go. I don't think you can do it. Do what? Say Peter Pan and think to take a pickle pepper without moving your lips. Well, I'll have a go. Go on. Right. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Right. Actually, I'll tell you what. Well, I want you to just sit there because this is very difficult. I know. Complete silence. Quiet! Okay. <laughs> I'll sit there. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> I must concentrate. Watch my mouth. I'll watch it. Here we go. Right. Right. <clears throat> Are you ready? Stop it. I want to tell you something. I don't care what I'm trying to do with this. I want to go wee. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said I want to go wee. <laughs> Look, you should have thought about this before. But I didn't want to go this way. Right. Yeah. No, I didn't. Well, listen, you should... I'm terribly sorry about this. I want to go wee. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, look, sit there and just control yourself. Okay, I'll tell you. There we are. Right. Because I would, uh, I want to go away. What do you mean, quiet? I want to go away. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> now, are you ready?
ready to go wee. Oh, go on then. Wee! <laughs> Sonny Kiwi. I should think so. Don't call me Kiwi. Sonny Kiwi. <laughs> it's a Kiwi. Now, actually, not only will I do this, say Peter Piper without moving my lips. Yes. I will drink a pint of beer. A pint of beer. Yes. And smoke a cigar. At the same time, well, not at the same time. You can't do all three together. Of course not, because you see, the beer would make the cigar soggy, wouldn't it? Well, of course it would. <laughs> here we go. Go on then, Kiwi. Right, right. Now, it's very difficult. Very difficult. So, here we go. Right. So, don't forget, Peter Piper, Pitta Peck or Pickle Pepper. Yeah. Well, you start. All right, right. <gasps> Peter Piper, Pitta Peck or Pickle Pepper. If Peter Piper, Pitta Peck or Pickle Pepper. If Peter Piper, Pitta Peck or Pickle Pepper. Peter Peck. Just, just, just a minute. Oi. What do you want? Aren't you supposed to be drinking that and smoking the cigar? But you know I don't drink or smoke. <laughs> but I'm all wet now. Of course you are. You see, you can't do anything right. I wish I was like you, though. You want to be like me? Yeah. Hey, clap your hands. Come on, let's enjoy ourselves. Whoa. Now, I'm the king of this city. And the jungle we have the... Well, he's reached the top. And I've had to stop. And that's what's worrying me. Well, I want to be a man. And go right into town, you do, and be just like them other guys. And stop your monkeying around. Oh, if they do, who for do wanna be like you, like me? I wanna look like you, I talk like you. Good one, Keith. Well done, Cuddles. Well done. Little bit of pink in the middle. Bit of pink in there like that. Some splonge. And a big bit down there like that. We can imagine a big hill going up here with a little path going up the hill. Up to the top of the hill, which is up there, perhaps with a, a bare sandy bit on the top of the hill, there, like that. Hey, did it change it all? Now then, I put a square tooth down there, like this, and another square tooth there, with a shadow behind it. And perhaps we do a big pointy tooth there, like that. You know what this is going to be? Yes. yes, of course you do. A hippopotamus. Yeah. You know those teeth, when they clamp their mouth, they go, um, those teeth can cut you in two pieces like that. Um, clean as that. Very, very scary, isn't it? And his nostril, that he's, it sticks up just above his head, almost like a frog. And, and his eyes also stick up a little bit, little pink beady eye there. Looks just like a frog's eye when they swim along the surface of the water. All you can see is their nostril and their eyes sticking out there like that. And that's the size of his backside there. What a good one, isn't it? Who does that remind you of? Not a word. Not a word. Don't mention any teacher's names or we're all in trouble. <laughs> oh, gosh. I need to employ ten men to do this bit. Taking forever. That's good now. Bit of shadow behind that, behind that leg coming through there like that. And some shadow. Imagine he's standing in the rushes just next to the, next to a river. And we'll have some little rushes here. Boom, boom, bing, boom, bing, boom, bing. Like that. And perhaps a reflection of his foot there. A reflection of the other one. That's all reflection of the old hippo there. Now then, imagine this is in Africa and we've got some of these old thorn trees that stick up here and they've got very flat tops to them like that reflection of a thorn tree there reflection of a flat top there couple of trees up here right now we put some brilliant reflected light on here because he's just come out of the water a little bit of reflection on there 
A little bit on the tooth. Imagine that's gleaming up there, that tooth. <laughs> and some reflections round his feet where he stood in the water. Perhaps a little bit of a reflection in there. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Is that enough? What do you think? I think that's enough. Could I have the microphone, sir? Thank you. What's your name? James. James, thank you. Shall we do the song? Yes! A bold hippopotamus was standing one day by the banks of the cool Shalimar. He gazed at the bottom as it peacefully lay by the light of the evening star. While high on the hilltop sat combing her hair, his fair hippopotamine maid. This hippopotamus was no ignoramus and sang her this sweet serenade. When you like. There's nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. So follow me, follow, down to the hollow, and there let us wallow in glorious fun. The fair hippopotama he meant to entice from her seat on the hilltop above. As she had not got a ma, to give her advice, she came tiptoeing down to her love. Like thunder, the forests re-echoed the sound of the song that they sang as they met. His enamorata adjusted her garter, then lifted her voice in duet. For cooling the blood So follow me, follow Down to the hollow And there let us wallow In glorious fun Then more hippopotami Began to convene At the banks of that river So wide Now I wonder What am I to say Of the sea that ensued by the Shalimar side. They dived all at once with an ear-splitting splosh, then rose to the surface again. A regular army of hippopotami all chanting this haunting refrain. Thank you, Michelle. Now, the next bit I'm going to do in my bear skin. No, this is the bear skin I meant. <laughs> the changing guard at Buckingham Palace. Christopher Robin went down with Alice. Alice is marrying one of the guards. Soldier's life is terribly hard. Says Alice. You should see the changing of the guard. Hey, Jeff, run! And the heat And if you plead to enter pants, you press your noses to the rails and watch from there the changing of the guard. By the center! Me. But then I took her to the show She used to love me 
But now she says I have to go She was a good girl And I can never understand Why this old one need a rock And she fell completely She had to have his autograph And very sweetly She handed me the horse's laugh She was a good girl And I can never understand Why this old one need a rock Said the sergeant, do you think you're in? It's not the boys' brigade. The guns are on the boys' front. The march is being hard fought. The yes, the flashing. The sergeant's teeth are gnashing when the guns are on the boys' front. Come on, I. Ah, just. Come on, shovel up. Come on. Shape up in the rear rank. Eyes! Front! It's the soldiers of the Queen of Us who be my ass, who see my ass. In the fight for England's glory, as far as worldwide glory they can see. And when we say we all as one, and when they ask us, Oh, I've just about shouted myself hoarse through the course of the show. Just a couple more pleasant duties before the show's over. The first is to say thank you and farewell to Dollar! <laughs> and the second is thank you and farewell to Cuddles and Keith Harris! <laughs> Cuddles, take that out your mouth, you horrible little monkey, and get your hair cut. <laughs> Oh, come on, they're ready. Eyes right, eyes left, eyes right, eyes left, eyes right, eyes left. Oh, I'm fed up. Why? Eyes tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you next week in Brighton. Say goodbye, kids. Devalwa rehearses the Sadler's work.